Today, I bought the LEGO Star Wars 2015 Nabu Starfighter. Hello everyone, it is I, Republic Sets, and today we are taking a look at the 2015 75092 Nabu Starfighter for a pretty wizard reason. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this particular ship did show up in The Mandalorian. Obviously not this full design. This one's way more yellow. The new one is more silver. Either way, I did decide to go out and buy this one. I wanted to get this one really badly. I paid about 60 bucks for this open, so I don't have all the box and everything because it's very expensive. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. But with that said, I'm going to ask you to hit that subscribe button, and we are going to get right on into my review of this pretty awesome set. Now, I don't actually have the box as I stated previously, so here is a picture of the box. Now, first off, it's very cool. You get this whole feed background, which looks really cool, the whole hangar bay, and then you also do get the Rebels Stormtrooper in the top corner, and you also have the Disney logo in the bottom. I mean, look at all of the amazing figures, and it's just overall a great box design. It makes you really feel like you're getting a lot, which you do in this set. And for those who are wondering why I don't have the box, here is what the cost of a sealed Nabu Starfighter is. Anyway, I'm gonna take a brief look at the online instructions. Obviously very cool, very simplistic, and very neat looking. So yeah, let's get into our look at the builds and minifigures. Okay everyone, so here is the first minifigure that comes in this set, it is Young. Obi-Wan Kenobi, and wait one second, that looks pretty familiar. Gee, I wonder where I've seen that particular face before. Angry studs, I mean Obi-Wan, let's put that hair back on. And yes, this is Obi-Wan Kenobi, obviously. You do get that ponytail thing, I don't know what they call it, they're like Jedi Padawan tails. You get a lightsaber, some pretty decent back printing, nothing crazy, you get the cape and everything, just a very solid minifigure overall. Next up, we get that kid that doesn't like sand and also blew up an entire Separatist ship. Anakin Skywalker. Now, this is a great little interpretation of Little Orphan Annie. Now, Little Orphan Annie does, of course, come with that little adorable torso, that little, you know, I don't, I don't even know what to call it. He comes with a great hairpiece. I believe he comes with an alternate expression with a little sad face for when he has to leave his mom. And also, for the scene, he has a special helmet so that way he could say, oh, This is pod racing. So over here is the Nabu Starfighter pilot. He obviously comes with that great torso print. No special leg printing. He does again come with the same helmet as Anakin. He does not have back face printing. He also does have that amazing little back torso print. It looks really good. Just a great jumpsuit overall for the Nabu Starfighter pilot. You could have either him or Anakin pilot. Let's move into the next figure. Now here is the Legend R2-D2, nothing new or special with him, obviously this was about a year or two from the new variant, the last time we saw the old R2-D2 was in 30, 2013, this came out in 2015, so not a great or exciting figure, they've been using the same one for quite a long time now. Next up here are some of the basic B1 battle droids. You do get two basic ones here, nothing special, and then you also do get this front one. This is a little captain. He has some yellow markings on him. Nothing insane, just two special dots on the head and on the torso. Classic, classic designs. Again, great little figures. Now, let's get into ones that are kind of hard to determine if they're minifigures or not. But here are the droidka. Either way, you do get two of these in the set, which is extremely generous. Very similar to the ones we get in the Clone versus Droid Battle Pack. You do, however, get stickers on those little back pieces there, which actually look really cool. I like those a lot. Now, you guys know how these work. You basically roll them up into a ball, and you can just kind of roll them around however you want. And, you know, you play with them that way. Just really creative design. I think they really nailed it with these. Uh, they're not the best Droid designs. I honestly think the first ones were probably the most effective when it came to, you know, playability. Uh, but this works really well too for what it is. Now let's roll on in to the next builds. And ladies and gentlemen, docking at the Nabu hangar is the N1 Nabu Starfighter surrounded by all of its accoutrements. Now let's take a look at them all individually. First I would like to separate all the side builds so we really get a lid of rid of a lot of the clutter we get with this particular set uh, and move into this main beauty. This is the N1 Nabu Starfighter which made a recent appearance in The Mandalorian. 
Now, first off, you will actually notice that is not actually a part of the ship. There is a special stand they give to this set, which looks great. You also, again, do get all of that stuff down there. We'll get into it in a second, but this is the main chick. Just want to take a good look at it. First off, on the exterior, you do get some really cool stickers. They say some stuff, I believe, that is in Arabesh, and you also do get some of the marks for the things that this particular fighter has killed. And then over here, you actually do get a really cool print. And that is of some weird little underwater creature. I believe that to be some sort of scorpion looking thing. Uh, and that is really cool. You also do get some more writing on that part of the cockpit. Now let's move to the front. Now in the front, you do get two flick fire missiles. You guys know the way these particular things work. Uh, now the way this one actually works is a little different. So you do get this little red thing at the bottom. So all you have to do is simply press it. And like so, you just move it from side to side and it shoots off these amazing green little flick fires. Very powerful, very strong. It just shot across the room. Next up is the cockpit. Now you can open this up very simply. And there is actually a little stud right here for you to sit Anakin Skywalker. It's not like the other sets where you do just get, you know, the regular seating position because this was before they invented midi legs, which they likely would use on him today. He fits very well. He fits very snug and very bug. Just looks great. And you can recreate the iconic scene where he goes, now this is pod racing. And there actually is room over here for you to put the legend R2-D2 himself. And a thing that I actually recommend is putting the head forward so you get a full look at all your characters. And a fun little fact, I'll pull up a diagram of the N1. They actually, the droids separate their heads from their bodies in order to actually fit in these things, which looks really kind of cool. And if the mission goes awry and you need to escape the droid, then all you have to do is press this button down here and you push it up and R2 is supposed to fall out. Boom, there you go. Now the look and playability of this is fun. It's very swooshable. I could see a lot of fun being had with this particular set. And it lands just fine on its own. It does not necessarily need the stand. I just think it helps make it look a little bit better. Speaking of stands, this is the one it's obviously on. It does come with some clips, but you can rotate it very easily. It just comes on a base plate. Very simple build. And while we're moving on to that, next up you have the weapon loader. This was very clearly just an extra build, so that way they could justify the price, which was a little pricey back in the day, uh, but now is probably about worth it if they charge 50 today. Uh, you know, you do get extra uh, four extra flick fires, which is really good because you get two in the set and you would get basically two extra rounds of ammo, which is quite cool in my opinion. Just a neat little hover transport build. You also do get a special fueling build. Now this is if you want to say fuel your Naboo Starfighter, you'll basically just go up to it and you can pretend to fuel it wherever you want. There's no particular like fueling hole, which I think probably would have been a decent feature, uh, but it's still something neat nonetheless. And also I do want to point something out quickly. Now here is this little turning piece. It looks very cool. Look at that. You just spin it around and you get this whole piece. Uh, I've seen this in sets before, but it's really kind of awesome to see used in this particular context. And I think very creatively. You also do get a set of handcuffs. I'm not 100% sure why. I think it's because the droids took the pilots captive. That's all really I could think of. You also do get a beautiful little crate here. It comes with three pistols, which are very cool. And just a nice extra added little detail. Now you do get this ladder build to help you load a minifigure, say, onto the Starfighter if they want to walk on or whatever, but I always found these extraordinarily lazy and I'm not a fan of ladders. They don't look good on shelves. They're not fun. You could just walk your minifigure up to the thing. It's not that difficult. They just kind of hop on. They don't, they don't need a ladder. Got it, Lego? Now here's everything you do get in this set, and the thing is, it's too much. Uh, I'll talk about it in my, you know, thoughts section a little bit more, but briefly, you know, you do just get one or two too many builds. You don't need this gas pump, you don't need the ladder, you don't really need this, you get the crate, you get the droids, the minifigures are all good. I just think this is a problem LEGO has where they set a fixed price that a set has to be, and they just do whatever they can to buff up this set, and they just couldn't add any more to this, which I think they probably should have just gone for a slightly bigger model if they had so much extra to work with. But I guess they were so proud of that, they were like, eh, screw it, we'll just throw in a few extras to jack up the price. And it certainly makes it feel obvious. I would have rather gotten, you know, extra droid to build or something. I would have rather gotten four droid to build. And that would have been kind of insane. But, you know, it is what it is. I'm... You know, 50-50 on it in that regard, but overall, the Nabu Starfighter itself, I think, makes up for it. It's a beautiful set, and at $50 back in the day, this wasn't too, too bad, and you're getting a ton of minifigures overall that really, really help 
make up for it. Now let's get into my full final thoughts. So here are my thoughts on this particular Nabu Starfighter set. Overall, the main build for the Nabu Starfighter is great. I have very few complaints with it. It's a solid build, not too many play features that it feels like too much. It's a little thin in the wing area. I feel like they could have gone a little more substantial. And the stand for it's great. And I, heck, I'd say even one of the side builds would be fine. The droids are great. The figures are great. The only problem that this set has is it is too much. Now, back in the day, this was $50, and it's probably closer to a $60 value adjusted for inflation these days. And basically, they figured, okay, well, we need to have a certain piece count, and they were just kind of filling stuff in. So they threw in ladders. They threw in these. They threw in this. They threw in this. They just threw in... A bunch of stuff. They threw in a second droid guide just because they needed extra pieces to fill out the set instead of just lowering the price, say $10. And quite frankly, I would have rather seen them lower the price of the set than just do this whole gigantic, like, mega pack full of useless crap. Like, we don't need a fuel pump. We do not need ladders. The figures can walk up. You can use your imagination. You do not need an entire rack full of blasters, and it is just kind of excess that is not necessary. And this is not a problem necessarily exclusive to the Nabu Starfighter. Lego certainly gotten better in regards to these types of things. Uh, like, But for instance, back in the day, we would get, say, a A-Wing Starfighter, and so they could justify a $30 price, they'd throw in a ladder. Or with the old Y-Wing back from 2017, you got just a bunch of extra like weird carts and like just stuff you didn't need. And this set probably is one of the biggest suffering cases from that, which is kind of unfortunate because the build is so nice. Realistically, they could have done this as a $30 to $40 set. I think it would have been perfect. I think it would have still been a little pricey, but I think they would have gotten away with it and it would have been fine. But overall, because of all the clutter, I'm going to give this set an 8 out of 10. And hopefully soon we will see this in The Mandalorian. I am almost certain we will see it in The Mandalorian. And I am... Almost dead certain this will be a set that we get this summer. It just makes a ton of sense. I would not be shocked in the slightest if this is a set that we see. We have a set in around a $60 price frame that we have to work with for a Book of Boba Fett set. And depending on how the next episode goes, this is going to be it. I'm just throwing it out there. With that said, I will see you all in the next one. Remember to peace out and stay awesome.